subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates let me ask the first question and this is the question i ask all the time i know that you are doing wonderful work shiksha lokam is doing wonderful work there are many other people uh, who are doing this there are people in pune uh, who are doing great work also uh, i know the asa ratings and i know also i mean these are all well meaning people uh, and many of your colleagues are also doing stuff in education but when we travel in the countryside as i do all the time uh, one thing i haven't let sort of my age and seniority come in the way of uh, is my is the fun i get out of journalism which is by traveling through india and usually we do that in elections or india has elections every 6 months and you find very little evidence on the ground when you go to rural schools in so many ways i went to small town schools in so many ways those schools are still not much different from what they used to be so maybe the scale of what we have in india is so enormous so enormous that unless one state government really embraces a program and takes it everywhere it becomes very difficult i don't know so i want to understand the scale issue and where do we find this impact so actually um i think the best way to do it would be to give you an example of um i was saying because i have a number of states for which i have examples but i just was just trying to pull up andhra pradesh uh, this happened over the last um, i would say last few months because of course covid also has accelerated the adoption uh, to give you some numbers before i start on andhra pradesh shikshalogam uh got probably about 1000 users in the first uh, year and a half and about 3.1 lakh users in the last 12 months that's the number right now it's 3.2 lakh users uh, on the system right now out of that 93000 users came from andhra pradesh right right and the reason being we we of course partnered with the government in all the states scrt and the state resource group came together with shiksha logam they wanted to launch an app called abhyas which will do leadership um, which will uh, do leadership development across andhra pradesh it was launched by the minister um, you i would say about 4 months back and suddenly the entire ecosystem got energized we got 93000 users from andhra pradesh alone in the last couple of months and which means um, this includes leaders and teachers it covers almost 30000 schools now we predominantly work with the government schools we are not working with we also would like to work with the semi private schools but predominantly we are working, working with the government schools in andhra pradesh and once the 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 system comes together the once they implement shiksha logam the government has a way to disseminate information government has a way to monitor uh, progress government has a way to um, um way to provide knowledge to the to the um uh, leaders and teachers on the ground so i agree with you i think the enormity of the scale the scale is very 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 high in india you know because it's a, it, there are 23 different languages there are 1.5 million um, government schools there are 4.5 million leaders involved um so it is an enormous problem to tackle that is why when you design a system you have to design it for scale so shiksha logam in many ways is designed for scale because of the way it is built because it is digital it can reach anywhere as long as you have a cell phone because it is collaborative you there is no one agency or one set of people who are actually bogging down by the load of building this um this knowledge assets so building this um, improvement projects um because because it is contextual because it is an amplification network which is contextual it allows better adoption because if you actually go to in uh, punjab and say that okay this is what happened in karnataka you please practice that is really not going to happen so you need to you know because of the scale because of the localization because of the diversity you of course have to build it for scale you have to design it for scale but you have to localize it contextualize it at every stage and it has to be digital in nature it cannot be physical in nature because in 2012 when i said i started out this journey of course i was a very you know i, I came from the physical world and i wanted to do some physical i figured out that in next 2 3 years that it is impossible to create any kind of impact in the physical world with such enormous such diverse such uh, 
um, contextual, um, you know, localized issues. So my answer to the question is, the scale is definitely a very, very big challenge. Do you have a system and do you see value in trying to evangelize it by setting it up as an example so different states, different regions, maybe even MLAs, some ministers or panchayats, anybody start seeing this, that look, this is this comes for free. This is doing very well for such a such place. Why don't we do it? And then maybe, uh, I don't know, I'm not getting ahead of myself. Maybe then franchise the idea. So, um, as I, I gave an example of Andhra. <clears throat> Punjab is another great example where there is an enormous amount of work. It uh, happened because of the collective conversation between the Punjab government and the Shiksha Logam and actually a couple of local partners on the ground because um, these are partners who work with us. So that helped because they are local partners. They work only in Punjab. So Punjab, we have about um, um, 25,000 teachers right now participa participating on the platform. As I said, we have about 3.2 lakhs of, um, uh, participants on the program. I would not claim that everyone is active every single day. But 3.2 lakhs is a good number to have. And actually, <laughs> our expectation is that um, the number will continue to climb to about uh, 15 million uh, participants in the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what are the kind of changes that you've seen on ground when you say leadership changes, teachers are being trained, leaders are being trained. How has their uh, uh, you know, whole attitude towards teaching and towards students has improved, which has helped you improve the situation on ground? Because the focus is to improve situation on ground. Because teaching is a very important aspect of education. Right. The, you see, um, I think there are, uh, when you want to improve situation on the ground, I think there is there has to be focus on the educational aspects of teaching as well as on the administrative aspects of teaching. Right? Mm -hmm. So both have to be addressed and there has to be people who are actually capable of um, doing both. So mm -hmm. I will give you, I think I'll give you Punjab as an example because okay. um, 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 I'm trying to find, and I have multiple examples, I'm trying to find the one where the response to COVID. Yeah, um, I think that will be an interesting yeah, topic to pick was, up at this point. Right. The, 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 uh. so, uh, so Punjab, for example, I'll give you uh, Punjab as an example of what they have done. One of the, so Punjab has used Samiksha as an app, Shiksha Logan platform for periodic classroom observations. Okay. Right? Because you are, you know, you are doing this in scale, right? You are doing it in thousands of schools. So um, there has been around 80,000 observations mm -hmm. in Punjab across the state. Okay. Right? And those observations were distilled down to various kinds of learnings. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and those have driven the changes to the pedagogy or the training of teachers which happens on the ground. So first thing is to identify the problem itself, right? When you look at the scale of the problem. So when you have 80,000 observations, it can only be done digitally. It can be only done on a platform. It can be only done on something like selection. And from that, they have derived um, um, various kinds of... Um, uh, the state, it has enabled the state to understand some of the critical issues which the teachers are faced with. And okay. they have been rolling out uh, interventions to address some of those. Mm -hmm. um, Anything on what these critical issues are? I think in Delhi, for example, one of the big, big issues which came out during their assessment was safety and security. Okay. So that's uh, what converted into, um, you know, um, say, how do you create safety and security for the schools? How do you um, make sure that, um, you know, this the environment, the premises, mm -hmm. secure, various kinds of interventions. You mean safety and security uh, c currently uh, with re relation to COVID and when? No, I think in general, they found in the general. Safety. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because there have been instances of attacks on students and teachers inside schools in Delhi. Yeah. Is that yeah. Well, that prompted the government to have a focus on this issue of uh, safety and security. But the important thing is that it's not about what it was. It is the important thing was that the assessment was done based on the platform. The interventions were created okay. based on the data. The, um, um, the changes were driven through the 
So uh, Samiksha did the assessment. Unnadi planned the uh, um, planned uh, improvements. Mm -hmm. Both allowed the people to actually execute on it, and Didi gave them a picture of what has been done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are the steps in which the whole operation is. Okay. okay. Uh, so Kritika, can I, can I ask you a question now? Sir, sir. Some of you uh, people with great hearts and great minds and a great deal of success uh, as entrepreneurs, so some, uh, some money and generosity, are focusing on education and doing many things because you have very, very uh, wisely identified that to be the most important target area, uh, particularly for any intervention from wiser people, not just resources, but also wisdom and technology. So that is uh, brilliantly done. So all the... All of you who are working in different areas or who have, who have different projects, do you also coordinate or do you work together? So if, if I may simplify it, are you a fleet of ships or an armada? Are you separate ships, each going their own way? So actually, in our case, there are two dimensions of um, cooperation which is happening. Number one, I think our platform itself, I'm sure that you are aware of Sunbird, which is uh, built by... Nandan and uh, the, the Nilakani Foundation. So we use actually uh, Sunbird as our core. Right. So there is an enormous amount of collaboration between us and uh, the Sunbird platform, which is happening. So that has allowed us to scale quite, uh, quite fast, quite fast. To so you, 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 you communicate amongst yourselves to make sure that you don't work at cross purposes or you don't work, uh, every or, week. or you don't, don't repeat each other's work. Every week. Every, every week, week there are calls. Every week there are calls. Right. Um, you know the learning, um, learning from the week, um, what worked, what did not work. But please remember, all of them work on the platform. Right. So we are incidental in some way. The platform takes over that role. So they are all sharing their uh, um, knowledge on the platform. So see, one thing we insist with them is that please use the platform. So if you are creating an asset, it is publicly available. So. For example, when we started this journey, there was the apprehension, right? This is my PPT, my asset. I did this. But we said, look, it is not about the asset or the PPT. It is about getting the things done on the ground. And where you are doing, you are getting it done on the ground. Nobody else is. So that opened up this possibility of, and now it has become institutionalized. So they share with each other. So we have uh, uh, best practice calls going on continuously where they will share with each other. They are uh, somewhat geographically separated because we are very, very large, uh, large country, but we are now starting to have more than one person in, in some of the states. So our objective is to work with 50 of them, um, work with them for a year very closely, then loosely for two more years, create a collective, get them ready for um, other, um, other interested parties to come in and support. <coughs> Right, so it is an accelerator. It's a, it is a, it's a kind of an accelerator which we run. I just wanted to ask you, you know, like a one very journalisty question. Uh, as somebody who's been working in the education sector, mostly for primary education, how much do you think the government pays importance to the primary education sector? Because it's about creating change at the grassroots level. So, how supportive is the government, state government, central government, to various efforts? by organizations so, like you right so actually in our experience it has been very very good because we good. cannot do it without the government support okay we cannot do a retail um, um, retail what is it retail uh, um, marketing kind of uh, you know we cannot do it because you're talking about reaching out to 300 3, 3 lakh um, readers uh, hmm. you know, already 3.2 lakh readers are already on the platform which is going to hmm. 15 lakh in the next it cannot be done without uh, strong support from the government. So each of the states, we work very closely with the CRT or the DAT or the, sorry, the local uh, government. Um, um, and, and, and I should say this, um, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, but the more we mm. win, the more we win. And what happens mm. is that success leads to success, right? And what you mm. rightly said, when Andhra has onboarded a um, lack of leaders onto the platform, Hmm. Then now we are getting calls saying that why why is it happening in Andhra, why is it not happening in Andhra. So okay. of course uh, in any system there is some um, threshold which you need to cross. 
mm-hmm. right? And the reason I am now talking about this is I believe we have crossed that threshold. That is the reason I um, I said this is the appropriate time to talk about this initiative and actually um, um, explain it uh, much more um, widely and clearly because I believe that with the numbers which we have about. 700 transactions per second, about 3.2 lakh people on board it. We have 1,000 micro improvements happening every day, um, present in multiple states, um, and we are getting interest from many more states. So I think it's, it's appropriate time to actually um, talk about it. So we are getting uh, very good support, and we will not be able to do it without the, um, without the government support. Do you see an intent uh, from the government to change things at the ground level when it comes to education? Because school education is something that, uh, you know, doesn't give them a good, like, it, it's not something that's going to give them fame, like, you know, IITs or IAMs and things like that. So actually, um, I think the conversations are steadily moving from quantity to quality, right? RT has brought in universal education. Um, our uh, growth enrollment rates have gone up in the primary, but you, you, but it, everyone is quite aware that, that our gross enrollment rate into higher education is still very, very um, low, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you just compare the enrollment into higher education in India, which is about 26%, compare that to China, which is 43, and US, which is 85. Than, yeah, 85. Right. So you are talking about a huge gap between primary education and um, and um, um, you know, the higher education. And I, for one, believes, right, because my life and my wife, Kumari's life are testament to the fact that we got educated, right? That's how we got educated and where we got where we, wherever we got. So the point I'm trying to make is that I think the conversations are definitely shifting from quantity to quality today. And that is where Shiksha Lagun comes into picture because that is where it makes sense for something like Shiksha Lagun to happen and being adopted because quantity happens when um, the, the system has an ability to change, system has an ability to drive change and and that is what Shiksha Logam allows um, this, the leadership to do and the government is definitely um, looking, um, you know, being very positive about, positive about it. Right. So, uh, if I may, I live in the world of politics, so uh, I will obviously not ask you a political question, but education is with the states. State governments are much more political than the central government. So you keep mentioning Andhra. Andhra had a change of government not long ago. And it was a very polarized, uh, it has a very polarized politics and very personalized politics. So when such a change happens, the inclination of the new guy's part is to change everything the previous guy was doing. Uh, how have you been able to deal with that political transition? So I should say, see, these digital platforms have a way of um, um, taking root into the system. So I was actually going to give you a technical answer to that, and then I will answer the other aspect, right? <laughs> right? Because it is, it is, it is into all the schools and it is into all the leaders, right? It is, it is not centrally, it is centrally endorsed, right? But not. Um, but adopted in the grassroots, right? So, you know, WhatsApp, for example, if government tomorrow decides WhatsApp, okay, we are going to ban it, it's going to be very difficult because it's adopted grassroots, right? So digital platforms have a way of um, uh, being very diverse, very well adopted on the ground, right? So that is one technical aspect of this. I just wanted to say that. See, I think um, I remember this. Um, many years back, of course, I used to go to Davos very often. And there was this big banner in Davos. Uh, I think it was in, um, I think it was, it was a campaign done by CIA. with something, I don't remember it exactly, but it said something like this. 15 years or 40 years or something, 43 governments, 23 politicians, but same direction. Right? I think... There is a level of un- understanding in my mind across saying that some things are very important, right? Some things are very important. Education is very important. Uh, our children have to get educated. Um, social mobility is very important. Middle class is very important. I think there is a common understanding which has happened over the years. So um, I personally not see a huge change in the government 
path to this adoption picked up very heavily being very honest but so far we have not seen any challenge wherever there has been so other than politicians also the bureaucrats change right so we also work with the bureaucracy very closely when they change we will have to go in we will have to re explain we will have to sometimes uh, re articulate but at the end of the day uh, we are not seeing any issues Uh, sir uh, just now you were talking about the intent of uh, uh, you know various state governments when it comes to education you said education is a very important aspect and the state governments are also realizing it you also spoke about how when the governments change you know everything you have to go about explaining things to people and everything so how does that come about has has there been any instance Uh, that you know you prepared a plan and the new government comes and it completely overturns the plan or you know so i would say uh, so far um, we have been um, um, extremely well received um, even when uh, there is a change in the bureaucracy or in the political system we have been well received um of course um, you know as i rightly said because um, it, it is uh, they right to ask questions i will not say that uh, um bad thing to do it's a good thing to do today uh, covid has changed the entire situation and all of education is being reimagined so one do your models shiksha lokam models remain relevant in any case what are you now doing uh, what kind of changes do you foresee or do you recommend in the way education is imparted in view of the environment now because this will stay like this for quite some time and how would shiksha lokam adjust to that or modify to that <coughs> so actually um, in the in the field of leadership development and in the field of capacity building in the field of um, 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 enhancing skills um, shiksha lokam becomes even more relevant because the traditional methods of doing many of those things are not viable today you can't get into a room and teach uh, you know 50 people you cannot and uh, you need to actually drive change across the state almost overnight right because this is an overnight phenomenon so if let's say for example you want to roll out a new way of teaching let's say you want to roll out a new way of engaging with your uh, with your children which means you have to actually roll out uh, you know across the country 1.5 million schools but if you take different uh, states different number of schools which means that a platform like shiksha logam becomes even more relevant because none of the traditional models of um change management can be adopted today right it has to be digital it has to be zero touch it has to be universal it has to be scalable it has to be instantly available um, you know the the lag between uh, proposing and sorry implementing and getting it in the local hands there it has to be localized so a platform like shiksha logam and we are seeing that in the adoption we are definitely seeing that in the adoption because there's a lot more interest coming through because today if if the government wants to actually roll out a new way of teaching if the government wants to roll out a, or anyone wants to roll out a new way of doing things across the state you need a digital platform and it is not only about teaching right the changes are not about teaching alone the changes are about um, um how do you operate the school itself right what are the philosophies which you adopt uh, do you have in contact classes if you do in contact classes what how many number of children should be there what should be the schedule so there is an enormous amount of um change not only in the pedagogical aspect but also in the um in the administrative and the um, and the and the uh, process aspect of the school and a platform like shiksha logam is even more relevant and actually we are clearly seeing that in some of the states where the shiksha logam has been adopted the government was able to send out um um you know instructions they were able to send out information instruction uh, and other content much more uh, easily you can imagine right they post it on the platform it is instantly available to um, 90 you know 100000 people across the state and not only that the, the, because the platform is collaborative they can actually the person has the ability to take it forward in different ways so um in today's world i think uh, to um, enable the leaders in k12 to do the right uh, changes to to plan for the new normal i think a digital platform like shiksha logam which has um, uh, which is free and universally available is even more relevant and we are seeing that well i said thank you very much this has been such a learning experience really i mean i'm uh, 
and this is uh, this is i was out of my depth here because these are not areas i spent time with young with with politicians who may be illiterate but who are very clever so it's not as if they are stupid they are very clever but this is uh, this is very interesting and very uh, important and i learned a lot and i look forward to we both look forward to a lot more of it